this is a short screencast about how we can use lists as menus in HTML and with CSS. So what I've already done is uh, create a web page with a banner, uh, a list and some um, paragraphs of text. Let's actually look at the source of what I've done just to orient you first of all, orientate you in terms of uh, the HTML. So head section, I've linked to a style sheet, which I've called list menus. I've done a wrapper div starting there and ending there just so I can um, surround the whole page and bring in the end margins. I've created a div with an H1 to be a banner, which I've commented, look in HTML, I'll say what that is. And then my menu is simply an unordered list. I will attach a class to that later, but I'm using an unordered list. And again, I've commented where it starts and where it ends. And then this is the content page, it contains several paragraphs which have not brought screen wrapping so that you can see the structure easier. And I've done another list in the middle because obviously I want to make sure that any styles that I do on this list won't affect this list. And then I've done another um, paragraph at the end of that. Okay, so that's the basic structure. An unordered list with list items that contain links. And those will be the menu. And just to remind you, that's kind of what that looks like at the moment. In my style sheet, I've already just done a simple definition for body to set up the font family and return all the margins to zero. So what I'm going to do in this first uh, list menu is that first of all I want to get rid of these dots. Uh, I want to move this over to the left hand side, so I want to get rid of this margin or padding or whatever it is that's causing that to go there. Um, and then ideally the entire list I want to float to allow this to come up by the side of it. So this menu will be a vertical menu, that's a description. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to do. So let's start, and I'm going to start off with the definition of UL because that's what my list is. It's a UL, an unordered list. At the moment, I've not attached any class to this, uh, but I will do in a minute. But at the moment, it's just a UL. So I'm going to make a definition of UL. And if you don't know um, which properties to alter, then it's a good idea to have loaded up the CSS2 reference, which you'll find at least in the labs set up uh, in the web dev bookmark folder. And if I go down to list and list style or list style type, I can find out that list style type can be non and it normally will apply to, uh, applies to elements with display list item which can be either the UL or the LI itself. Okay, so let's do UL, and it was list hyphen style hyphen type none. Okay, so I'll save that, go back to my page. That's it at the moment. I'm going to press Control R to refresh the page, and we'll see what happens. Well, it disappears, but unfortunately it also disappears on this list. Uh, as well, and that's not what we want. So somehow we've got to only affect this list, not all lists. And the way we can do that is simply by attaching a class to this UL. In the past, often what you've done is create a div and put a class on that, but you can attach a, a class directly to a, an item. You know, you can attach a, a class to a P or to an H1 or any uh, HTML element. So here I'm going to say uh, class equals menu. Sorry, I'm on a Mac and I haven't changed the keyboard, so sometimes I forget that the quotation marks are actually somewhere else. So class equals menu, and I'm going to save that. And I'm going to modify my definition. So it's not all ULs that get altered. It's actually dot menu space UL. So in other words, it's only ULs Actually, that's not quite true. I was going to say it's only ULs that are inside menus. And that's not the case in this because this UL isn't inside a div, for instance, called menu. This UL has the class menu attached to it. So in actual fact, my definition isn't going to look like that. It would look like that if I had a div with a UL inside it. My definition is going to be if you're a UL dot menu. So if you're a UL and attached 
to it is menu. No space. If there were a space, that would mean things with a class menu that are inside the UL, and that isn't the case. This is a UL with menu attached to it. So hopefully, what we'll now find if I refresh is the dots will come back on this one, but they're not there on that one. So, I've, in other words, I'm addressing this element. This is the element I've specified. Okay, now I want to try and get rid of the margin uh, that's there. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's a margin or if it's padding. So, let's say that if you're a UL with menu attached, inside which you're an LI, okay, then this is what we're going to alter. Uh, let's try margin first of all. Margin zero, and let's see what happens. We'll do one thing at a time. Okay, nothing happened. So unless I forgot to save it, which I didn't, that would seem to suggest that it's not margin. Maybe it's padding. Uh, if it's not, maybe it's the UL that has the definition. Okay, and nothing happened either. So I've got that wrong somewhere. So um, let's think of what possibilities. Well, I've tried margin, I've tried padding. So it's neither of those two, so I'll just remove it. So there's two possibilities in why things aren't working. Either that uh, ul.menuli isn't kind of addressing those, um, which is one possibility, or it's that the padding and the margin is not to do with the li, it's to do with the ul itself. So since that, that is easier to test, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll try margin, first of all, margin zero on the UL. I'll save that. I'll refresh the page, and nothing happens. So that wasn't correct. So let's try padding. Notice I'm going through the possibilities systematically, one by one, deleting things that don't work, rather than leaving things there. Ah, press refresh, and that works. So in actual fact, we've discovered that what makes the list items indent is actually the padding of the UL. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, right, because the UL is the block element that surrounds these individual block elements, then let's try making the UL with menu attached also float. So if we say float, and we make it float to the left, and we give it a width, because you always tend to give uh, things that are float a definite width, otherwise they, they just expand and take up 100% according to the content that's in them. And let's make the width, let's make it a quite specific width at the minute. Let's make it 100 pixels. And I'm doing that rather than using a percentage, because in this particular occasion, I don't want my menu to get larger and smaller as I resize the page. Um, but the rest of the content will resize, so it will still give me a liquid layout. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to save that, refresh the page, and I've just pressed Control r to refresh. So that worked. Look, it's given me 100 pixels, and because it's a float, everything else floats around it. Okay. However, I really don't want this to f go underneath like that, to wrap around underneath. I'd really like this here to move over there. Well, at one time I used to float this as well, the content, whereas now I've discovered a much easier way to do it, which is to give this content, because don't forget this is a block called content, um, uh, to give this content a left margin that's just fractionally bigger than the width of that. So in other words, um, this con class content here, I give this a left margin that's just a fraction wider than the menu is wide. So let's do that. And oh, by the way, at the minute, I'm not using that definition, so I'll just remove it. So what we've got is content as a class, and we'll do a definition, which is margin left. I want it to be just a fraction bigger than the 100 pixels that that is. So let's make it like 103 pixels. And let's see what happens. So save that, press Control R to refresh, and suddenly the left margin has pushed that over, so it's given the impression that, that that's in its own little box. Okay, now I'm just going to make one final adjustment, and that's I put a wrapper around the entire th page, and that can be quite useful. So since that's around the entire page and contains everything, I'm going to put its definition at the top, and I'm going to 
just give that a width of let's say 80% so it takes up 80% of the screen. Save that, refresh the page and sure enough now my entire page only takes 80% of the screen but I don't want it to be 80% on the left. Ideally what I want is this 20% that's left over to be evenly distributed between the left and the right hand side. So all I need to do is specify the margin and rather than specify margin left and then margin right, I'm going to use that trick of the first measurement is the top and the bottom if I specify two and the next one is auto. So in other words, zero is top and bottom, auto is left and right. And auto just means it will evenly distribute that 20% into 10 on the left and 10 on the right. So when I press refresh, it kind of centers my page for me. So now, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. All I've got to do is do what I would normally do, you know, remove underlines. Uh, so for instance, to do that, what we're talking about is if you are a menu class, I don't need to specify ul.menu every time. I could just say if you're a menu class, inside which you're an A, then do the following. Uh, text decoration non if I do that, then the underline disappears, and then I can do exactly what you normally do with hover states and things like that. So I can change the um, menu A if you're in that pseudo state called hover. Uh, I can change the background color or indeed any property at all. It's usually not a good idea to change the font or to make it bold because it takes up more space. But if I Make the background color uh, a gray. Then, when I hover over it, they'll they'll do that. But actually, one thing I don't like there is look. The gray only is as big as the word, and that's because the word an A, if you remember, is an inline element. I'd really like it if I could convert it to a block element. Then it would be as big as its parent, because remember, all block elements are 100% of their parent. So I think I'm going to do that as well. Menu A, I'm going to say display block. And that will turn it into a block element instead of an inline element, which will just mean that when I refresh the page, then it occupies the entire block. And so that menu is, um, you know, the background is always the same width, so that looks nice. Now, if I wanted a vertical menu, it would be straightforward. All I would need to do is make the LIs float, and then that way they, they, they'd come side by side, and instead of making it that width, I wouldn't specify width. I, I think what I'll do is I'll do a separate screencast on that. But as you can see, making using a list as a menu is just as easy as making a set of links a menu, but it has the big advantage that semantically speaking, it's a better approach because this really is a list. It's a list of links. Okay, hope that was useful to you. Thanks a lot.